Hi folks, welcome to RJ Impact. Today we're going to be talking about a fraud that, although perpetrated in the modern era, has the same modus operandi as frauds that were common during the 1849 gold rush. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out when a new video is released. This fraud has everything, governments, possible murders, disappearances, shady characters, high finance, court cases, actions across continents, deepest Borneo, Caribbean attacks, and as we'll see, the makings of an epic film. Briex Minerals Limited, Briex, based in Calgary, Canada, was involved in a major gold mining scandal when it reported it was sitting on a massive gold deposit at Busang, Indonesia. Briex bought the Busang site and in October 1995 announced significant amounts of gold had been discovered sending its stock price soaring. Originally a penny stock, its stock price reached a peak of 286 Canadian dollars in May 1996 on the Toronto Stock Exchange. In just three years, the value of the company had gone from nothing to six billion dollars. Briex collapsed a year later after the gold samples were found to be a fraud. Busang's gold resource originally was estimated by Briex's independent consulting company Kilbourne Engineering to be approximately 71 million troy ounces. Reports of resource estimates of up to 200 million troy ounces were never made by Briex, although the property was described as having this potential by John Felderhoff, Briex's Vice President for Exploration, in an interview with Fortune magazine. Briex's gold at Busang was actually a massive fraud. Encouraging gold deposits were found in many test drill holes and the project received a positive technical assessment by Kilbourne. Crushed core samples had been falsified by salting with gold. In fact, in an older report found in Briex files, a mineralogist had reported that some gold particles in the Busang samples had a dark yellow skin compared with their interior and had traces of silver. This fact was to become very significant, as we'll find out later. None of the mineralogists who studied the gold grains gave any indication that any of the gold was inconsistent with the Busang property. This salting of the crushed core samples with gold constitutes the most elaborate fraud in the history of mining. In 1997, Briex collapsed and its shares became worthless in one of the biggest stock scandals in Canadian history and the biggest mining scandal of all time. History David Walsh founded Briex Minerals Limited in 1989. The company didn't make a significant profit before 1993, when Walsh followed the advice of geologist John Felderhoff and bought a property in the middle of a jungle near the Busang River in Kalimantan, Indonesia. Here, a prospector called Michael de Guzman had walked out of the Borneo jungles with an extraordinary find, gold. Felderhoff and Guzman wined and dined Walsh and got him and Briex to commit to the project. For the next three years, de Guzman produced thousands of gold samples riddled with gold. He always made sure he had some time alone with the samples before they were sent for analysis. De Guzman had in fact filed gold from his wedding ring and mixed the flakes in with the rock samples. However, his wedding ring only lasted so long and he started buying gold from the locals to riddle the samples with over $61,000 of gold over the years. This explains the different colour and silver trace found in some of the sample analysis, as we heard earlier. The very first estimate of the site by its project manager was approximately 2 million troy ounces. The estimate of the site's worth increased over time. In 1995 it was 30 million ounces, in 1996 60 million and finally in 1997 70 million ounces. Things then took a political and a commercial turn. Some other mineral companies organised failed takeovers of the company, but the Indonesian government of President Suharto also got involved. The government said that a small company like Briex couldn't exploit the site by itself, and the Indonesians initially suggested that Briex share the site with a larger company, in association with Suharto's daughter. Briex also hired Suharto's son Sijit to handle their side of the affair. Bob Hassan, Another Suharto acquaintance negotiated a deal whereby Briex would have a 45% share, Freeport McMoran would run the mine and Hassan would get a cut as well. Briex would have the land rights for 30 years. To offset the reduction in the share, 
Guzman ramped up the amount of gold in the samples. The stock price soared again. The deal was announced on February the 17th, 1997, and Freeport to McMoran began their initial due diligence evaluation of the site. This is where things started to go wrong. The Freeport miners who did their own tests couldn't find any gold and became suspicious. Freeport demanded that Guzman explain his findings. Things began to unravel rapidly in March 1997 when Guzman reportedly committed suicide by jumping from a helicopter in Indonesia. A body was found four days later in the jungle, mysteriously missing its hands and feet, and with its penis surgically removed. In addition, the body was reportedly mostly eaten by animals and was allegedly only identified from molars and a thumbprint. The family were not allowed to see the body. Perhaps coincidentally, according to one source, a body had gone missing from the morgue of the town from which the helicopter flew only a few days earlier. At the time of his disappearance slash suicide, insert which verb you think's best here, Guzman's office caught fire and all his records were destroyed. The purported remains of de Guzman were found only 400 metres from a logging road. No one saw the body except another Filipino geologist who claimed it was de Guzman. In fact, it is also known that one of the five women who considered themselves his wife was actually receiving monetary payments from somebody long after the supposed death of de Guzman. Is Guzman still alive? Well, we don't actually know. Only a week later, also in March 1997, Freeport announced that its own due diligence core samples had insignificant amounts of gold. A frenzied sell-off of shares followed and President Suharto postponed signing the mining deal. Briex demanded more reviews and commissioned a review of the test drilling. Results, predictably, were not favourable. A third-party independent company, Strathcona Minerals, was brought in to make its own analysis they published their results on May the 4th, 1997. The Basang core samples had been salted with gold dust. In mineral exploration, salting is the process of adding a valuable metal, especially gold or silver, to a sample to change the value of the sample with the intent to deceive potential buyers of the mine. A well-known historical example is the Diamond Hoax of 1872 in San Francisco. It was also prevalent during the 1800s in America such that no less than Mark Twain said, a mine is a hole in the ground owned by a liar. Trading in Briex was soon suspended on the stock exchange and the company filed for bankruptcy protection. Briex faced a number of lawsuits by angry investors who'd lost billions. Among the major losers were three Canadian public sector organisations. The Ontario Municipal Employees Retirement Board lost $45 million, the Quebec Public Sector Pension Fund lost $70 million and the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan lost $100 million. There was a fallout in the Canadian financial sector. The fraud proved a major embarrassment for Peter Monk, the head of Barrett Gold and the then head of the Toronto Stock Exchange. This resulted in his ousting in 1999. It also began a tumultuous realignment of the Canadian stock exchanges. Briex itself went bankrupt on November the 5th, 1997. Walsh moved to the Bahamas in 1998, professing his innocence. Two mass gunmen broke into his home in Nassau, tied him up and threatened to shoot him unless he turned over all his money. The incident ended peacefully, and on June the 4th, 1998, Walsh died of a brain aneurysm. In 1999, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, RCMP, announced that it was ending its investigation without laying criminal charges against anyone. Critics argued that the RCMP was underfunded and understaffed to handle complex criminal fraud cases and also charged that Canadian laws in this area were inadequate. However, despite the dropping of criminal charges, civil class action suits against Briex Director, advising financial firms and Kilbourne continued. In May 1999, the Ontario Securities Commission charged Federhoff with insider trading. No other member of Briex's board of directors or others associated with the Busang project were charged by the OSC. The OSC then admitted that there was no evidence that Federhoff was either involved in the fraud or was aware of the fraud. The trial was suspended in April 2001 when the OSC tried to have presiding judge Peter Hearn removed for alleged bias against the prosecution. 
This was denied by an independent judge and on December 10th, 2003, the appeal was also denied by a panel of judges. The trial resumed in 2005. Federhoff attended without testifying at a number of the court hearings as the six-year case made its way through the system. The basis of the OSC action as well as the civil class action suits is the alleged existence of numerous and obvious red flags which should have been recognised. The trial was eventually concluded on the Tuesday the 31st of July 2007 with a not guilty verdict of illegal insider trading. Days after the verdict, the OSC also decided not to appeal the decision a landmark victory for Federhoff and his lawyer. A class action lawsuit was also finally concluded by the court in early 2014. 3.5 million Canadian dollars damages, which was all that was recoverable, were donated to charity and the University of Ottawa since the funds were deemed too low to be meaningfully distributed amongst the large number of plaintiffs. Federhoff passed away in 2019 in Manila, Philippines at the age of 79. Some people think that Guzman is still alive and it's apparently easy to buy a body in Indonesia and it's also easy to disappear. The film Gold, a dramatisation derived from the Briak story, was released worldwide on January the 27th, 2017. For legal reasons, however, and to enhance the appeal of the film to American audiences, the film's producers denied that the film was in any way connected to the Canadian Briax story. nothing and the workers are leaving. Wait, wait, wait. Kenny, look. We got a gold mine. We got a gold mine. Conclusion. Despite the failed prosecutions, it is clear that somebody falsified the original gold samples. It is unclear to this day exactly who did it, how they did it, when they did it, why they did it. One thing that is clear, however, is this is a <coughs> fraud. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out when a new video is released.